Yo, what's good? Welcome to another episode of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. I'm your host and the man behind the mic, KSAP. And today we got a great show lined up for you guys. Uh, once you come across the video, uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so you know when Simply Ball Dropping drops another hot banger. Like I've always stated, we cover sports, hot topics, roundtable talk. Also a marriage chronicles. And y'all know what my mantra is. Tell a friend to tell a friend. It might not be for you, but it might be for them. I see everybody's comments. Keep all your comments coming. Hashtag salute. Um, a lot of engagement. I appreciate everybody's support. Like I said, man, we got a great show lined up for you today. And before we get this show started, you know, this episode is sponsored by. This episode is sponsored by True Choice Insurance. Here at True Choice, we take a different philosophy when it comes to providing you with your insurance options. We emphasize the value of the products we offer instead of playing on the fear of you not being protected in your time of need. True Choice is affiliated with more than 60 insurance companies. This makes us one of the most independent agencies in the state of Texas. Please visit truechoiceinsurance.com for all your insurance needs. Yeah, once again, man, shout out to my man, Brian Kelly and his wife over there at True Choice Insurance. Um, Y'all visit them on the website. Um, Visit www.truechoiceinsurance.com for all your insurance needs. Hey, let them know the man behind the mic, KSAP, sent you. Well, today's show, man, this is one of these shows, man, that, you know, I put together and, you know, the jealousy and the hate, it just has to stop. And like I've always stated, Dion is the center tension of the sports world right now. And I would like to say it's more about Dion. It's not about the Colorado Buffalo. I think everything is being depicted because it's Deion Sanders and the slander and the backlash that he is getting. That needs to pipe down some, man. It's, it's taken away from what the Colorado football team as a whole is doing. And like I've said, man, the build up to these games and the comments that the coaches are saying. I mean, some of this stuff is outlandish. You know, leading up to the Oregon game last week, you know, Dan Lanning, he had a lot to say in his press game conference, post-conference, right? Um, he, he did a speech. He was trying to fire his team up in the locker room. Um, he made some statements where, like, saying that the fairy tale story is ending. This game is not played in Hollywood. This is going to be played on the field. Um, they're doing it for clicks and views. We're doing it to get wins. And what I say to that is, if you really look at it in its totality, you know, Dan Lanning, he invited them cameras into the locker room. He wanted that moment knowing that the spotlight was going to be on him because they're playing Colorado and Deion Sanders. So basically when you made your statement that Colorado is doing it for clicks and views, what you think you just did there, you did it for clicks and views because it's all over social media and everybody saw and heard the comments that you made, giving your team a pep rally speech. So that got clicks and views. So you can't have it both ways. Then he goes on to say in his post game press conference that, you know, he's wishing the best for Dion. You know, it's like you're contradicting yourself. You try to double down on what you said and try to stand pat. But he said, you know, he was in the moment. But you're talking about they doing it for clicks and views. You the one that invited the cameras in the locker room. You knew the camera was on. You knew what you was going to say was going to be national media. It was going to be out there for people to hear and people to see 
how you was pumping your kids up and your statements didn't go along at what you said because you did it for clicks and views as well. And a comment that was made last night from one of my listeners was talking about, you know, if it wasn't for Nike, you know, Oregon wouldn't have this big of a press. And I agree with that. Also, they got like what, 20, 20 to 25 different uniforms that they d be displaying. And if you notice, man, Phil Knight was at the game on Saturday. He met Dion center field. Um, also, you know, the jealousy and the hate that people have for Dion right now, Dion is the same person as he was when he played the game. And he's bringing that into coaching. And I look at it like this. Out of 133 FBS schools, there's 14 black head coaches. And for, you know, some of the black coaches to make comments that they've made, especially, you know, Jay Norvell to make a comment that he made slandering Dion and how he was raised by his mom, that was outlandish. And like I said, 14 out of 133, 14 black head coaches. And I think what these coaches are, the black coaches and the white coaches, I think what it is is because Dion didn't have to take that same route that they took. You know, some of them probably started off as a coordinator, a video guy, and things like that. So they're thinking like Dion didn't have to put the grind in, and he has become a head coach at an FBS. And, you know, a lot of people look, look side eye on that and they slight that. And it was like, it was just like handed to him. Well, you know, you're Deion Sanders. You're a hall of famer. You're prime time. Some things are rewarded to you. Some things are given to you, given an opportunity. Yeah. He didn't have to go through the grind, but he's been successful. He's been successful at what he has done on all levels from peewee football to high school football, you know, to, the HBCU with Jackson State, he's been successful. And people are trying to, you know, shit on his name, trying to bring him down. And like I said, it's not always about, you know, the Colorado football team. It's always made it about Dion. Like I said before, a lot of these coaches are game planning just to, you know, beat Dion, just so he won't be successful because things was handed to him. He didn't have to go through the grind and all the manpower hours to get a job. It was like it was handed to him because his name is Deion Sanders primetime and he's a Hall of Famer. Also, you know, his confidence, it rubs people the wrong way. I don't think Deion's being arrogant. Deion's been that way to all his life. That's just Deion. You got to accept Deion for who he is. It's, it's not arrogant. It's his confidence. And Deion has made some remarks that, you know, lets people know that, you know, he's not being arrogant. So let's take a listen to this clip that Dion said, and this is what I think rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Take a listen. I truly make a difference. I make folks nervous, man. I, I get folks moving in their seat. I get folks twirling their thumbs. I get them thinking and second guessing themselves. You know what, have you ever been so clean that you walked in and somebody looked down at you then they looked at themselves, they had to check themselves because you were so clean? I have that effect. That's the vibe you're getting. No, I have that effect. Shoot, we don't want to let that engine that could get going because if that engine that could get going, he's going to start saying, I think I can, I think I can. And sooner or later, he's going to start saying, I know I can, I know I can. Then sooner or later, he's going to start saying, I did that. Now, see, you just heard what Dion said, and I think that rubs a lot of people the wrong way. His swag, the confident. I don't think it's arrogance. It's his confidence. He's been like that all his life. And... Dion has taken the high road on all the slander that he's been getting and all the hate that he's been getting. He's taken a high road in all his press conferences. You've never heard Dion slight the man. He has never attacked nobody's character. Even if you go back in the past and you really look at it, Dion has never been that much of a trash talker. Dion has never, you know, trash talked his opponents. You know, he hypes himself up within. He gets the crowd ready. He is his confident, his swag. You know, if you take that swag and that confidence as trash talking, then you have a problem because Dion don't trash talk his opponents. 
and he's taking the high road in his press conferences with every time somebody has said something negative about him Dion has never fired back at the man he don't shoot shots he said he could be petty but he said my blessing is my blessing their blessing is their blessing I wish him much success I wish them to do well I don't wish no ill will on no man so Dion has taken the higher road and I want y'all to take a listen to what Dion said after the Oregon, Oregon game. Take a listen. So I'm good, but that's what it really is. I don't think they get any uh, extra satisfaction, you know. It is what it is, and I, I signed up for it, so let's go. No, they don't make it tough on our team. These are grown men. I'm not out there. If I was out there playing against every coach I played against, we would be totally dominant. Yeah, I wasn't lying. I wasn't lying. I didn't. Uh, it translates in practice. It is. I don't say stuff just to say it for a click, you know, contrary to what some may say. But uh, yeah, I, get, I keep receipts. Uh, but I'm serious. I analyze and I understand what we're up against and what we have and what we need. One thing that I could say honestly and candidly, you better get me right now. This is the worst we're going to be. You better get me right now. Now, somebody, yeah, I, I got messengers. God bless him, though, man. He's a great coach. He did a great job. God bless him. He can take their shots. They won. I don't shoot. I don't do that. They won. Excuse me? Um, well, I, I think the film is going to speak for itself when they watch the film with their position coaches and um, as the offense and the defense. But singularly you you're able to pull some guys aside and, and pick them up and, and and highlight some of the the good things that they did everyone didn't play bad everyone didn't play bad that's not the good every coach didn't coach bad you know that's not the case as well but we got some work to do and uh you better get us right now because i like what i see i, I love the. i know i have on shades but i can see the future and it looks really good so i'm, I'm excited about it i really am Thank you. God bless you all, man. Be safe. Now, see, that was well done by Dion. Never took a shot at the Oregon coach. Said, God bless him. He's doing a hell of a job with the kids. You know, you won. Take your shots. Dion said, I don't shoot. But he said, I got on glasses and I can see the future. And that's what I'm saying about Dion. Nowhere in that clip did Dion fire back at that coach. He answered the questions that the, the media was presenting to him and he did a great job. He's humble. Like, you know, he's preparing his kids and, you know, they're steadily talking about Dion instead of the Colorado football team. Everything's about Dion. So you guys let me know in the comments what you think. Um, continue to like comment subscribe tell a friend to tell a friend it might not be for you but it might be for them make sure you got your post notifications on make sure you're watching all the ads because it only helps the channel grow and that's going to wrap up another episode of the simply ball dropping podcast i'm your host and the man behind the mic k sap we're going to catch you on the next one deuces keep them comments coming thanks for listening to the simply ball dropping podcast be sure to subscribe like and share on all major platforms Another one.